My first book, Stolen, is about a girl called Gemma, who is 16 years old and lives in London with her parents. She's off on a family holiday with her mum and dad, and there in the airport of Bangkok, she meets an older, mysterious, pretty handsome guy called Ty, who buys her a coffee. And unknown to Gemma, he drugs the coffee, and he kidnaps her. And he takes her to the middle of the great sandy desert in Australia, and there he expects her to fall in love with him, but also with the desert itself. Both Stolen and The Killing Woods deal with notions of fear and excitement, danger and fun, light and darkness. The Father in The Killing Woods is not particularly based on a real person that I know. However, there are aspects of people that I have met and stories that I've read that are fed into the creation of that character. Most particularly, a newspaper article that I read several years ago, which was talking about how one in ten prisoners have actually come from a military background. And that really stuck in my head, how war, how combat, how fighting can affect a person well into when, when they are discharged and when they've left the army. And that is what I was interested in exploring and where that character initially came from. PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder, is something that my novel The Killing Woods does deal with and talks about. I would say that my uh, research into PTSD started as long ago as when I was writing Stolen. And in Stolen I was thinking about Stockholm Syndrome and how trauma caused by an event could spill out into a life. Same, same idea with PTSD. The research that I did with PTSD uh, mostly concerned uh, interviewing military professionals, um, ex-military professionals, and reading a lot around the subject. Um, I spent a long time chatting with a very inspiring soldier who had been um, dismissed from Afghanistan, and I would, I would say that much of my understanding of PTSD came from those really inspiring chats I had with him. The toughest character in The Killing Woods to write was definitely Damon. And that is because he initially wasn't in the book at all. It was initially Emily's story. And little by little, Damon forced himself into this narrative. Um, but he didn't force himself very easily. I had to write him first in one way, and then another way, and then another way. And so he was a particularly difficult character to get his voice right, but most particularly his story arc right. I spent a lot of time in the woods when I was getting the inspiration for The Killing Woods. And they were woods wherever I went. If I was on holiday, I would find a wood and I would spend some time in that wood. Um, the major wood inspiration for the book are two woods. The woods behind my house, which I would walk through when I got stuck in the novel and when I just needed to, to clear my head a bit, I'd go and walk in those woods. And there were a lot of deer in those woods, so that probably explains the influence of the deer through the book. Um, the other woods that really inspired me were woods that I uh, ride my horse through. And um, when you're with a horse, you're very quiet. You're, you're thinking about just the sounds of the horse and the hoof and the woods. And I think the sensory aspects of the woods definitely came from those particular woods. I have so many favourite authors that have inspired me through my life and through writing this book. Authors like the Australian writer Tim Winton, like Maggie Stiefvater, like Suzanne Collins. In particular, when I was a teenager myself, there's an author called John Marsden who I just could not get enough of. I read all of his books cover to cover and most particularly adored his Tomorrow When the War Began series set in the Australian bush, a group of teenagers hiding and fighting a war. When I'm not writing, I particularly like to go horse riding in my spare time and just gallop around through the woods for as long as I possibly can. I also like to travel, hang out with friends, and read and read and read. Now, I didn't always know I wanted to be a writer, although I did know that I always wanted to write. When I was at school, 
if someone asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I pretty much always would say a dolphin trainer. And I was really bad at science and not a particularly good swimmer, so that idea went out the window pretty fast. I finished school and thought, hey, what, do I, what can I do? What am I good at? Writing. I've always wanted to write. So that's when I first began to think about being a writer, seriously. Before I became a writer, I actually thought I wanted to be an actress, and I played about with acting in films and TV and, and theatre for a little while when I was uh, at uni in Australia. And then I realised, actually, writing is far more fun and far more rewarding, and so I became a writer. My favourite place to write is actually different to my most productive place to write. My favourite place to write is, without a doubt, a place with a view, a place that my mind can wander and dream and think and imagine. And that's my favourite. It's not my most productive, because I dream too much and I wander too much and I imagine too much. My most productive place to write is in a small, dark room with not so many things to look at. Um, so it's a constant battle I have. In terms of a writing routine, I wish I had a regular writing routine. I wish I was one of those authors that got up at five in the morning and wrote from six to nine, a couple of thousand words, done. Sadly, I am not. If I do have a writing routine, it is to get up, faff about for quite some time, walk around the woods, go on the internet, maybe even ride my horse if I'm really being lazy, and then I think about writing. And I think my routine is actually I do need to go and do something else that's not writing, that's still allowing me to think about what the writing is that I'm about to do. Then when I do end up sitting down at my desk and thinking, oh my goodness, half the day is over, it's okay. Because actually, in the back of my head, I have been ticking over what I wanted to write. And now I'm ready. For those of you who want to write, this is what I think is important to think about. I think of writing as a craft, as something that you learn and you get better at. Just as you get better at, at singing or dancing or creating a piece of art, writing is very similar. You need to practice, you need to hone that craft, you need to try as many different styles as you possibly can, as many different forms as you possibly can, and just engage in the daily routine and the daily act of putting pen to paper, words to screen and engaging with the world through your written words.